Hello and welcome to the video. In this video we're looking at the latest version of the Vampire from Hobby King. Now this is a model I've actually had for quite a long time, but this has had a couple of tweaks and changes from the version that's been around. This version in the Canadian colours has been available for a couple of weeks now, so we've had a good chance to take it out and put it through its paces. So in this video I very quickly want to talk about the model, show you how to put it together, give you some tips and tricks, talk a little bit about how it flies and give you kind of my review at the end. Now the de Havilland Vampire or the DH100 is one of a handful of craft that for us in the UK hold a special place in our hearts. De Havilland actually produced some really interesting, unusual looking aircraft and the DH100, also known as the Vampire, and the DH110 and something called the Vulcan Bomber hold a special place in the hearts of people from the UK because they were actually kind of designed and built here. I think the Vampire actually first flew in the 20th of September 1946, I think it was, and then it was in use right up to the very end of the 70s in South Africa. So because of that nostalgic era, I was very keen to get my hands on this new version and see what it was like. So the price of the new model is about the same as the price as the previous version. The previous version had all RAF colours, but this one comes with this red nose and red wing tips as well, which looks very striking indeed. The specs are it's a 1100 mm wingspan. It's quite short. It's only 888 mm front to back. Comes with a 70 mm EDF internally, 60 amp speed controller and the standard kind of 9 gram servos you'd expect with servoless electronic retracts which are very nice but unfortunately don't feature covers when they go into the body. Now this model only has ailerons and elevator at the back so there are no rudder servos. I know lots of videos on YouTube and articles in the forums about people adding servos into the rear of the vehicle and also adding flaps as well and both of those would have been nice additions in this revised version because really what we're getting with this Canadian version is a couple of improvements the main ones being now there are carbon spars running down the tails that hold the horizontal stabilizer in place out at the back and there's also changes to the way the panel lines are rendered and the aluminium paintwork finish on the plane is a little bit duller and a lot more realistic in my opinion too. So let's talk about how this thing goes together. Pretty straightforward. Uh, the build instructions are very good in the manual. It's nice and clear. The wings are not supported by a carbon fiber spar, but the wings themselves are very thick to accommodate the intakes for the air. So although there is flex when you're flying, it's not a disaster that there isn't any carbon fiber reinforcement. First thing I did was just put the canopy together the pilot, in my opinion, was a little bit low. I created a 3D printable extension that lifted him into a much more natural position under the canopy. So you can find that extension on my Thingiverse page. Then it's a case of just gluing the canopy to the top. Once the canopy's done, then the main plane itself is only six parts. You have the main fuselage that has the electronics built in with the EDF. Then you have the two wing pieces, two tails that have to be connected to the wings and the horizontal stabilizer that goes between the two. Now the big tip I'll give here when you're actually putting this together is there is a canopy at the underneath of the plane that is just behind where the additional auxiliary vents are to allow the EDF to suck enough air in and that canopy covers the EDF fan itself. Now the sides of that cover are actually part of where the wing is glued into the side of the fuselage so I would recommend remove that cover as you're attaching the wing so you don't accidentally glue it in place. Because if you do, you're not going to be able to get at that EDF fan. And the EDF fan is okay, but as all models at this kind of price range you'd expect, it could do with a bit of a balance. I'd recommend using something like an epoxy to glue the wings into place, just because hot glue is, isn't particularly good. Although it will work, you will struggle to get the wings completely home before the hot glue starts cooling down and setting up. The servos are pre-installed but the control rods aren't so you're going to have to pop those on. I found that I needed to open up the hole slightly with a little drill but once that was done I could get everything working fine. Next job was to install the tails. Again these are supported by carbon fibre in these new versions and I used hot glue for these because I wanted it to set up quite quickly because I was going to have to sit and hold it. Take your time with this test fit everything because you want to make sure that when you finish everything is going to be nice and square. 
Once the two wings were done, then I glued them to the side of the main fuselage. Here you can actually see the front hole in this image is the one that connects the air in the vents at the front of the wing. The second one, that's actually the gap that's left when you remove the cover for the EDF fan. Once you've got both of those tails in place, then it's just a case of putting the horizontal stabilizer in. There is nice recesses cut for the very long servo extension cable that runs down the side of one of the tails. You can feed that into the main compartment and plug it into your receiver. The back end then connects into the servo that's installed for the elevator in the horizontal stabilizer. And again, that's relatively quick and easy to put in. I actually used hot glue for that myself. It was a nice quick install. Just double check before everything sets up that you have a nice square airframe and the horizontal stabilizer is in line with the wings and everything else on the vehicle. Last tip I give is, as I always do when I'm building a plane, if you haven't got a servo tester, get your hands on one if you're going to be building planes like this. It's always handy to just make sure that the servos are okay. And before you start connecting everything up, just double check that the middle position for the channels, the 1500 microsecond position, is getting your servos to 90 degrees or as close to as mechanically as you can get it. This model does look absolutely fantastic in the sunshine. Let me just demo the retracts here uh, out before one of the flights. You can see the sun glinting off the paintwork and you can see how the retracts fall down. The nice thing is the front wheel is steerable. So although there is a rudder at the back of the plane, there's definitely going to be a connection on your receiver for a rudder for the steerable nose wheel. And that nose wheel rotates through 90 degrees as it drops out the fuselage. So it's right way when it's down and then it folds flat to fold up into the model really nice trick now this first flight that i tried this is the footage from it was a little bit tricky because i made the mistake of following the manual here now the manual reckons that you have to have the center of gravity about 311 millimeters back from the nose that is way too far back in my humble opinion and looking at the rc group forums i'm not the only one that thinks that's the case personally if you're going to get one of these pop your center of gravity about 15, 16 millimeters in front of where it says in the manual to be in with a chance. There's tons of power in the model and it flies very well. It isn't particularly quick, but it flies very much like a big stable flying wing and you don't have that rudder to worry about in flight either. Unfortunately, because of that center of gravity problem, I did have to fight with a tail heavy plane. And there's that little adage which a nose heavy plane will fly poorly, a tail heavy plane will fly once. And this almost did. Managed to land it, unfortunately took a bit of a knock on the nose, dunked it in some very hot water and got all these creases out and it looks okay now. But it does really illustrate how sensitive this model is to center of gravity. So again, don't follow what's in the manual. If your manual you're reading says 311 millimeters, put it about 15, 16 millimeters ahead of that. I have reported the problem to Hobby King, so hopefully the manual will be updated if they could take it out and do a little bit more testing and that'll stop other people getting caught out too. So in summary, what do I think? I do love the way this thing looks, particularly in sunshine when it's glinting off that kind of duller aluminium paint finish that this new model has. It's very easy to fly, to hand launch and to belly land, even in conditions where you probably wouldn't want to have the gear down in grassy situations. It doesn't really matter. Just keep the gear up and you can belly land it and it will handle that beautifully. And that's one of the things I really like about this. It's a pretty robust model because not only has it had that crash that I've just talked about, it's had a couple of interesting interesting landings as well and it just kind of shrugs them off. There is an awful lot of foam here, those wings are very big and thick and although they will flex in very violent manoeuvres they don't seem to mind if you give them a bit of a knock. It does have very gentle stall characteristics, if you pull that stick back and just bleed off the speed the nose will just drop so it is very much like a well behaved flying wing in flight. So if, like me, you're a pilot that doesn't do an awful lot of stuff with EDF, it's a very nice plane for a first EDF model. The noise from that EDF is louder than you expect Ooh. if you're not an EDF fan. For me, I really like the noise of the screaming EDF as it kind of zoomed around. It's not the fastest model on the planet because even though you're getting all that noise, uh, because it's got quite a big cross section, it's a 70 millimeter EDF fan, you aren't gonna break any speed records. But with something like this, I think it looks better when you're flying at scale style speeds anyway. The retracts are really nice, 
Wish they'd have had covers on them that closed up. Things like the T28 from Hobby King has that. And I think it looks a much neater bottom of the plane when those kind of doors are in place. Doesn't seem to affect the flight characteristics. It's just a cosmetic thing. And just as I said, if you are not an EDF flyer, but you want a cheap and cheerful plane to start with EDF, this is definitely something to look at. There are a couple of things to be aware of. As I've already said, ignore the centre of gravity in the manual. If the manual you're reading says it's 311 millimetres, that is way too far back and will cause you massive amounts of grief. Put it a little bit more further forward and you're probably going to be in with a better chance. This model is very sensitive to centre of gravity changes, so be prepared to just do little short flights just to fine tune it for the setup that you've got. As I've already mentioned, the EDF fan could do with a little bit of a balance. Most of the fans in models at this price point do. It is a standard 70mm size, so you could swap it out with another model if you wanted to upgrade it in the future. The noise from that EDF is a lot louder than you'd expect, so be aware of that. If you are wanting to fly near people, pets and property, or in a park, uh, you will probably struggle more with this kind of plane that, because of the noise of the EDF than with something with a small prop. So keep that in mind and make sure wherever you're going to fly, that additional noise isn't going to present a problem for you as a pilot. And the last thing to keep in mind is this isn't super duper fast. It will fly around beautifully. It flies like a big stable wing. It hasn't got any real bad characteristics at all. So hopefully that's interesting for those of you that are interested in this new Hobby King Vampire plane. In summary, it's very nice. If you have never had an EDF before, this is definitely one to have a crack at, but just be super careful of that center of gravity. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video and particularly for watching right to the very end. We try and release a video on Tuesday and Friday and sometimes we'll release one or two extra ones in a week as well. All of the videos on the channel are organised into easy to use playlists so do have a look in there because if you're interested in a subject we organise all the videos on that subject so you can find them easily all together in one place. If you like what we're doing, then please like and subscribe and tell others about the channel so they can come and join as well. We're available in all of the usual social media places, particularly in places like Instagram, Twitter, and we also share all of our 3D designs on Thingiverse.